Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for August 26, 2024. Can I have a motion to go in executive session to discuss the employment history of particular pedagogical and non-pedagogical employees and matters made confidential under federal law? The FERPA? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Can I have a motion to go back into public session? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for August 26, 2024. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence for armed forces and those in our community that have lost loved ones, especially the grandmother of Daniela Salmon? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, the nation. Thank you, everybody. Good evening. Um, we're going to start with our first public comment. Gender related, I don't know we signed up. Okay. We're going on <laughs> to the first public hearing. Our first public hearing, I have a motion to open the public hearing for the District Code of Conduct. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, who wants to discuss the changes, Ron? Sure. <laughs> So over the course of the past, I, I want to say year, but the process has actually been over a year, but for the past year, I'll say in earnest, our Board of Education Policy Committee has reviewed our code of conduct, which resides on our website and certainly in our policy book as well, to look at the infractions, the nature of the infractions, the consequences that accompany the infractions, whether uh, there were restorative measures that can be put in place, and to ensure that we're remaining current with some of the infractions that we were observing by today's standards. So our policy committee conducted a very deep dive into the document. We had our building administrators present to provide what they're experiencing in the field, in the buildings, to uh, share their experiences, share um, some of the trends that they've observed. And, and we worked together with our legal counsel to ensure that uh, the document was brought up to speed. Specifically, we looked at the infractions, we looked at the processes that we're following with regard to addressing the infractions, and we looked at the consequences associated with the infractions. Well, if there's more depth that you'd like me to provide or questions, I'm happy to answer those. Um, does the board have any questions or comments? I, I know I sat on the policy committee for part of it. It was a very thorough review, and I know that you guys went after it afterwards. Mm -hmm. You kept going for it. And I, I know that we're especially grateful to have the help of the administrators in the high school and in middle school, because that was very helpful to make the changes. Um, so we're going to have public comment. Is there anybody from the public who wants to speak about the district code of conduct? No? OK, so can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Can I have a motion to approve the second reading and the adoption of policy 5300, the Code of Conduct? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now can I have a motion to open the public hearing for the district-wide safety plan for 2024-2025? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You want to take this again, Ron? Of course. So Ms. Sanfilippo chairs our district-wide safety team. We also have a representative of the board who sits on that committee and representative of each of our schools, including our school resource officers, sit on our district safety committee. This document, which has been posted to our website for over 30 days now for the community to review, just gives a high-level overview of some of the security protocols, procedures, and uh, processes in place in our school district. It does not provide the deep dive into the evacuation routes and locations and some of the more in-depth pieces that are confidential because they're part of our building safety plans. The building safety plans as well as the district safety plans do get sent to the state. They're certainly reviewed with our school resource officers. They're reviewed with our security consultants from PNW VOCES. So this document, again, it's a high-level overview of some of the policies, procedures, and, and protocols that we have in place. And again, we're 
we, we provide this every year. We give an update every year. We review this every year. The committee meets about four times or five times a year throughout the course of the school year. And based on what we're observing throughout the course of the year, the documents amended. No substantial changes from this past year. Okay. Any questions from the board? No. Does anybody in the public have any comments about the district-wide safety plan? No. And I have a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye opposed. Can I have a motion to adopt the district-wide safety plan for the 2024-25 school year? Second. All those in favor? Aye, Aye opposed. Um, we're up to the superintendent's report. Okay. After talking about code of conduct and safety plans, I want to talk about some more uplifting and happier mm -hmm. items. So what I want to share, first of all, I want to take a moment to acknowledge uh, Kristen Samet in the audience tonight. Kristen, I'll be recommending and, and um, the board will be voting to accept this recommendation to appoint Kristen as the assistant principal of Crown Pond School. So Kristen is a resident here in the community, stood out amongst a very competitive pool of applicants, and we're delighted to have her here in the district. So a couple of other items. We have some great news with regard to calendar to share. We welcomed back our new teachers. We welcomed our new teachers officially to the school district today. We had a great group of 26 new teachers come to today's session. We have a ser uh, several se certified teaching assistants who we've hired, clinicians, some really, really talented staff coming on board for the 24-25 school year. We start tomorrow. We have our administrative retreat tomorrow where the entire administrative uh, team gets together to talk about our planning and objectives for the coming school year. The opening day ceremony for all of our faculty and staff is Wednesday, August 28th. And then just one week from today, I'm sorry, from tomorrow, one week from tomorrow, we'll be welcoming our students back, September 3rd. And I'll say this very publicly, we missed our students. We, boy, did we miss our students. It's just not the same not having the children on campus. Today when I pulled up, it felt different. It feels different during our ESY program, which is terrific. We have a great extended school year program that ran from July 1st until August 9th, and the staff did such a great job creating a community and, and such a wonderful warm climate, and Caroline Almeida led that effort, and my thanks to her and her team. It was great, and then you go from August 9th to August 26th and you don't have students on campus, and it's a very lonely campus without children on it. That's what makes our campus what it is. And so to pull up today and see hundreds of fall athletes on campus just really reinvigorated, uh, certainly myself and, and our entire team. So we're excited to welcome back our students one week from tomorrow. A couple of other updates that I want to share. The turf field outside is completed. It is beautiful. The feedback that we've received has been remarkable. Again, my commendation to our steering committee, uh, which Ms. Carbone chairs, for delivering another project year after year that's on time and within the budget. Uh, and that's just a tremendous feat to achieve, especially in this climate. We ran into, this was not without uh, a little bit of angst. We ran into a shortage. We promised the community the uh, the infill, the specialized infill, the EPDM infill that is a clean rubber. It passes the same safety standards used applied to children's toys. And so for us, that was a non-negotiable and there was a delay. So fortunately, our construction manager and the team were able to clear up the delay. We had three trucks shipped in from Indiana. They drove overnight from Indiana to get the material here and, and our students are enjoying the fruits of their labor today. So we're, we're delighted to have tur the turf field up and running. We look forward to further enhancements to our facilities to just make the facility commensurate with the high quality education experience that our students are receiving within the classrooms. A couple of other items that I want to share with you. We have a new food service provider for the 2024-25 school year. I'll be issuing a letter to the community with some more detail on this later this week. And I want to share that we rebid, which you're all well aware of, you adopted the bids. But in the interest of ensuring that our taxpayers are getting the best value while still maintaining our high nutritional standards, we went out, rebid the contract. Whitson's was the lowest food bidder. My thanks to Ms. Sanfilippo and, and her team for having the foresight that enabled us to retain most of the staff who are in our building. So the children will still get to see the same familiar faces with whom they worked previously, but wearing 
a different shirt working for a different company at this point. So that's an exciting endeavor. One of the items on this evening's agenda is the establishment of a petty cash fund. And I just want to clarify why, because we haven't had that in the past. That is to ensure that the cash registers have money in them on day one to ensure they can make change for students paying cash. So we need the board's authorization to make those funds available. In the past, Aramark had provided that petty cash. However, when you think about all the money in the registers for the school district's lunch fund, not mixing those two sources of funding actually makes perfect sense. So this way, even the initial amount of money in each of the cash registers in our schools will be district funding. So that's, uh, it's not money being spent, so I want to clarify that. Often when we say a petty cash, it's a, it's a spending of funds. That is not this case. Those monies will be there theoretically at the end of the year. When we take our revenue, we will, we're going to subtract off that $600 initial investment to get the cash registers up and running. But I wanted to just clarify that because that's new and we had our mark for many years. But welcome to Whitson's. I've already been in touch with the food service director, who is actually the former assistant food service director with Aramark. The former director, Mary Jo Hernandez, decided to retire after a long and, and great career with Aramark. And uh, her assistant was promoted to the director position and just delighted to work with her. Pre-K is in year two. We have about 120 students enrolled. I'm pleased to share again for the second consecutive year, and hopefully we'll say this every year, every family in our community who signed up for our pre-K program will have access to the program at no cost. So there was not one family that was turned away. Every family is getting access who wants to have their child in the program. And enrollment is still open. I believe we're still accepting some registration. The child must turn four prior to December 1st of this year, and they must live within the Yorktown Central School District catchment area. So if you're a new resident, if you've just moved in and you've discovered this cable channel or our YouTube channel, please enroll your child soon. There are still some spots open. And then I also wanted to share a couple of items with regard to placement. So the student placement data was released erroneously early. So one of our websites that we use for students to practice math outside of school, IXL, was not turned off for the summer. So as we were making updates in our system, enrolling children in classes, it was reflecting the classroom teacher, for K-8 anyway, English teacher for for K-8. So I wanted to share that that was something, uh, it, it was a little breach on our end that we did not have um, IXL locked off, but I wanted to acknowledge that nonetheless. In some cases, it, the information wasn't accurate. Whether there was a change made in our system that didn't register with IXL, that was something that um, we observed as well. But in, in many cases, the information there was accurate. With my final two updates are with regard to our PPS department. I want to share with our community that our pupil personnel services department has made their move to French Hill as of Friday. They've moved to French Hill. You'll continue to get them at the same extensions. You'll continue to call and email. The, that information, contact information has not changed, but their physical address and location has moved to French Hill. They'll be in the lobby. We are now um, quite full at French Hill, and PPS kind of rounds off the occupancy that we have in that building. And my thanks to the PPS office. They have been not only, and you'll see this evening how many placements or, or uh, how many authorizations you'll have for the CSE recommendations. They've been hard at work this summer just around the clock and, and to factor in a move where you're packing up all your stuff and then relocating in the midst of all that. It's just an enormous feat. So uh, commendation to Caroline and her team. And the reason why our PPS department has moved over to French Hill is to create space for the new therapeutic alternative instructional program at our high school, our FlexPath program, which is a really exciting program. We have about 10 students enrolled in the program now. They'll be housed in the former PPS offices on the Yorktown High School campus, so we're excited to welcome that program to our school district. Uh, there, there are a lot of needs that will be met as a result of us offering this program. So 
lots of good things happening, lots of exciting things happening in our school district. We continue to forge ahead. At the next meeting, I will have my opening of schools report, which will be a more formal presentation to the board and to our community. But this evening, I wanted to share some highlights with you. Terrific. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I'm going to ask for a point of order if everybody's okay. I'd like to bring one personnel item up to the top. Um, are you guys okay with it? Yeah. Okay. Because um, Kristen Salmon's got a little one, and I don't think we want her to have to sit around for forever. <laughs> so can I have a motion to appoint Kristen Salmon as the assistant principal at Crompont? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. Uh, we're going to go up to board reports. We're going to start with Reshmi audit. Sure. So the audit committee is working through the draft of the risk assessment report uh, of the fiscal year that ended June 30th. Um, and that should be on the agenda in one of the September meetings. We're still working through it. Uh, we just got another draft. So, um, And then once we wrap up with that, we're going to get back to meeting with the external auditor, I think we had said late September for that, uh, late September, early October, and uh, pick pick up the draft of that and work through that draft. When does the external auditor's report do up stated? It's due to us early October, and then it's due to the state uh, mid-October. Okay, can we just make sure we're coordinating with uh, board dates? Always. Board yeah, I know. Always. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have that. We just don't have the meetings set up on our calendar yet, but when we met with them over the summer, we did talk about time frames and weeks. Terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we are up to educational vision. Catalina is not here. We have not met because we have been on break. So I believe we're going to start up again in September. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, facilities. Uh, I used to go at the end. I was steering. Now I'm facilities. <laughs> so we have met one, two, three, four, five times since the last time I gave this report. Uh, we meet every other week. Um, and the work we've been working on over the summer is, well, uh, we worked on the, uh, the completion of the turf replacement that Ron just spoke about. We're still working on the design and development issues for the new baseball and the multi-turf field. So there's two turfs going in there, along with the concession building and the plaza. Uh, the design schematics for Mohansic and Brookside, we worked on those. We're getting those costed out, and then we have to come back and um, figure out how to make all that work. And we have also been talking a lot about the Mohansic kitchen and its design. So those things have been working through all summer. Our key highlights, well, the turf's now complete. We had some timing issues with the EPDM, but um, the new concession field, multi-purpose field and plaza are going to be running over two things. One is our own stormwater pipes, which we did an investigation on, and they are failing. We also are running through um, the town sewer line runs through there, so we're trying to figure out how to work with the town to see if they can look at the condition of those pipes before we start to build more permanent structures above that. So those things we need to work on. Um, we're working with the kitchen designer from Mohansic. Um, Susie was very gracious in allowing us to increase the kitchen size by taking um, a space that was adjoining it that was used for another office that she's going to move for us. So that was really good, but it allows now for a walk-in fridge and gives them better flow. So those are some of the highlights of what we've been working on, and we're just going to continue. The goal is to get the athletic field design up to SED early fall. So that's where we are with that. Um, we can move on to fiscal advisory. Mike. Uh, last fiscal advisory committee meeting was July 24th. We met uh, just before the end of the fiscal year to review uh, the current fund balance positions within the district, uh, mostly looking at um, our TRS reserves. Uh, we looked at an insurance liability reserve, and we discussed uh, funding the capital reserve, which we had approved up to $2 million in uh, previously. Uh, all designed to maintain a strong balance sheet as well as comply with the 4% unrestricted fund balance cap. Next meeting will be sometime in September. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl. Sure. Um, since my last update, we have met four times. Some of the items that have been discussed, um, well, for one, we introduced our new attorney 
at one of our meetings and just went over the flow of the meetings so that um, she could then join us after that on a very seamless basis. Uh, we've talked about the, content, uh, the code of conduct, which we already touched on, facilities use, student health services, and then any annual reviews that were required of us. Recommendations tonight, we have five policies up for adoption, three policies um, which were reviewed without changes, and our next meeting will be on September 5th. Terrific. Okay. Thank you. Uh, policies. So policy, no, wait, board action, approval of minutes, I'm sorry. Uh, a motion to approve the minutes of the July 15th meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion to approve the amended 24-25 board meeting calendar. So moved. Second. Discussion. So I just want to be clear. What we did was we took away one of the meetings, I believe it was in March, so that we don't have three consecutive weeks together. But that's putting us in a position where we're still having a lot of presentations because they're budget presentations. So it's either going to be more meetings and shorter meetings or less meetings and longer meetings. And I think the board has to make a decision as to which way we want to go. Um, and, you know, we can adopt this tonight or we can talk about it further. I just don't know how people feel about that. I mean, last last meeting, that last budget meeting we had, which is the one we always get shoved, it's the curriculum one, and it is just really long, and it's at the end, and we don't have time to break it into smaller pieces. I think what, I, I think we're trying to do things, I, it just, Based on this, I think we're trying to do it differently than what we did last year, because um, it was also 5 to 7 p.m. for the executive session because we had some other things to talk about, and there are two such meetings, so it just becomes a lot with a 5 p.m. start and then uh, you know four big heavy topics to talk through starting at 7 p.m. But we're going to have that same thing because those two March meetings are going to have to be the tenure review meetings Correct. as well, those are going to be the long meetings. Yes, but they're not consecutive. So I think so. I think two 5 p.m. starts and three meetings a month, it, like the March becomes a difficult month. Uh, I, I it, it was a lot last year, so I think, yeah. uh, I'm, I, I think I'm gathering that this is just trying to do it differently than last year. We're kind of going back to where we were before. Right. I just want to make sure that it is clear the meetings will, will be longer. I mean, there's no way around it if we have the presentations and it. we're okay with that. I just want everybody's opinion before we make another change. So, you know, Mike, what do you think? Doesn't matter to me. Cheryl? Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter to me either. Fresh me? Yeah, I'm good with what's here. Lisa? Good with me. Pete? I'm fine. Okay. Second. Yeah. Yeah. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. A motion to amend letter Y in other appointments from the July 15, 2024 organizational meeting. They are the two names in red. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, policies. A motion, to approve, oh, a motion to approve the first reading. We're not, it's just, we're just having a first reading. not a motion mm -hmm. if we have a first reading, right? Correct. We have a first reading of the following right. policies. It says, it says first, read first reading and adoption. And adoption. We are having a first, read a first reading and adoption. And adoption. Right. Right. Okay, motion to approve the first reading and adoption of the following policies and regulations. 1500 public use of facilities, 1500R public use of facilities regulation, 6700 purchasing, 67R purchasing regulation, and a motion to approve the second reading and adoption of the following policy, which is 5420 Student Health Services. So moved. Second. Discussion. I have a discussion on facilities, on the regulation. Well, that's actually, it's the policy. Where you're talking about um, adding a new user, mm -hmm. and it has to have board approval, so you're saying it has to be done 30 days before. I don't know if, if you an application coming in 30 days before is going to get enough time to get onto a board agenda. Is Did you guys talk about that timing? We did have that discussion. Yeah, Ron, do you want to? Did. Yeah, we ultimately were never more than 30 days away from a board meeting, unless it happens in the summertime, of course. But certainly the goal would be to have 30 days of notice. So we did discuss it in a perfect world. We're never more than 
30 days from a board meeting so we can get that onto a board agenda. The intent is to have an approved list of facility users on the annual organizational meeting in July. Right. And as new user groups, and I don't know if there are going to be new user groups because for the most part, the user groups are limited to either organizations that are tangentially connected to the school district or town or community-based, um, town, specifically town-based organizations. But yeah, 30 days is something that we would certainly strive to get approval by. Okay. And then my second question was, it was the use of kitchen equipment. Mm -hmm. Now we have a new kitchen um, vendor, and I know some of, some of the equipment he talked about bringing in would have been their equipment. You know, we weren't talking about like um, hot, hot, hot chocolate machines and things. So if the, if the equipment isn't ours, do we have a right to, you know, put it out for people to rent from us? So I think what we're talking about when we're referring to kitchen equipment, we're talking about the stoves and the ovens and things like that. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't imagine that we would be um, allowing people to use the vendor's equipment. We're just talking our sinks, our ovens, our freezers, refrigerators, things that belong to us. Is we that serve. something we need to be specific about um, in the policy? I, I think that's something we can deal with on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. If somebody wanted to use something that didn't belong to us, we would just deny it, and that's it. So, okay. Yeah. And so. there are situations where we'll have that the kitchen staff there. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, there will be situations where we do have the kitchen staff on hand, so maybe perhaps in those situations we would give them permission. Uh -huh. To use right. it, but I just yeah. because we just switched yeah. uh, food service right. vendors. I just did right. you get caught in something? So right. that's all. Right, right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody else, or am I the only one? <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. A um, the policy committee conducted a review, an annual review on August eighth, twenty twenty four. The follow twenty twenty four. The following policies and regulations with no changes. It was nineteen hundred. Parent involvement and family engagement, 6240 investments, and 6240 are its regulation. And I don't believe there's any um, action needed. Is that correct? Because we don't have a motion. I'm sorry. The, the first one, um, the A, the Yeah, and I read them both. I read them both. She read them at the same yes, time. Yes, she did. Okay. Yes. Okay. So on the annual reviews, because there's no changes, we don't have action. Is that correct, Yvette? Right. I just read them we out. We just brought them to your attention so okay. that you know that we've reviewed them. All right. Correct. We know you do your job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Personnel. Be it resolved that the Board of Education does hereby approve the creation of an additional 1.0 FTE athletic trainer. The position of athletic trainer will be filled in accordance with Westchester Civil Service regulations. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby authorizes the superintendent to execute Amendments to the salary agreements with the district's non-represented employees effective July 1st, 2024 and dated August 26, 2024 as presented to the board at this meeting. A copy of said agreement shall be incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting. Be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes the superintendent to sign and approves a memorandum of agreement between the district and the YCT to set stipend rates for the new, new created modified sports coaches to be equivalent to freshman assistant coaches. Be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes the superintendent to sign and approves the terms of a revised agreement between the district and the YCT to provide a one-time reimbursement for certification expenses incurred by secondary level teachers in order to obtain a statement of continued eligibility in computer science to include teachers holding professional certifications. And be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes the superintendent to sign and approves the terms and of a Feinerman agreement between the district, the YCT, and Emily Faso, speech and language pathologist for the 2024-2025 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And personnel, um, and upon recommendation of the superintendent, a motion that the following be approved. Uh, we already did um, Kristen Samet, so the other certified personnel appointments on this list, part-time appointments, other compensation, we have extra duty, additions to the substitute list, our summer curriculum hours for new teachers, our coaches and co-curricular for 2024-25, a volunteer. A few corrections, police monitors, and some resignations. Under classified personnel, we have appointments to civil service, a stipend, and additions to substitute list corrections, resignations for the purpose of retirement, additional resignations. So moved. Second. All those Discussion. In? Go ahead. All right. Can we 
you just explain the non-district funded stipend for the teacher, teacher center? center support? Yep. Yeah. What is that? So mean? we're the we serve as the LEA of the Teacher Center of Central Northern Westchester. So that means our business office handles all of the paperwork, all of the financing. So they have their own board, they have their own budget, they have their own bylaws, they receive funding from the state, and we serve essentially as the pass-through for those funds. So as they go to pay out one of our employees, it comes through the district, it comes into the district, and we just pay that amount of money out to the employee. So this employee, outside of working hours, is providing support to the teacher center on a stipend basis. That stipend is not is paid through the district, but it's not from the school district. That money originates with the teacher center. So is this something they've already been doing, or this Correct. is? Correct, yeah, this has been happening for each year, eight years, 10 years, okay. certainly yeah. since prior to my arrival, maybe even longer. I think it's been since we've been on the board. And it's outside of the- It's outside of the work day, the employee's work day, correct. Good, thanks. Okay. And, and Jack, just one question. This, uh, the list of uh, hires, is there any gaps, teachers, coaches, that we still need to fill? Yes. So there are a couple of gaps. We had some late CTA resignations. You'll notice that we had some CTAs resign to accept positions outside. Uh, you'll see that there was one certified teaching assistant who was hired here, but unfortunately, we don't have enough positions for everybody who's looking for work. So many of our CTAs have left to get their own classrooms, get teaching jobs in other districts. We're so happy for them. One is starting her own business, which is terrific. And, and again, we're happy for her uh, in that new endeavor. So we do have some certified teaching assistant vacancies because there were some late resignations that came in. For the most part, outside of one reading teacher and one AIS teacher, AIS teacher, Mohansic reading teacher at Brookside, some CTAs throughout the district, the FlexPath AP, we're still in the process of recruiting. And then there is a leave replacement AIS position that will be shared across two schools. But for the most part, the staff hires uh, have, been, have been filled successfully. So unless I'm leaving anything out, Deirdre. Okay. How many hires were there over the summer? So there were 26 teachers, or 27 teachers, including an ASL uh, part-time position that we were able to secure, which was at the 11th hour, and we're fortunate to be able to offer the program as, as we had hoped, as we had promised. But overall, between the C certified teaching assistants and teachers, I believe we're at 37. And that includes administrators? That includes administrators. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Business office. Resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby accepts the proposals for Kids Educational Services, SLP, OTPT, LMSW, Psychology, Audi Audiology, PP, PLLC. <laughs> wow. For student support services for the 24-25 school year. So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A motion to approve the amendment for the 24-25 school year to the following affiliation agreements for the 24-25 school year, Emerson College and Mercy College. I'll move second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A motion to approve the following Yorktown High School athletic trips, uh, YCA cheer camp to Trails End and cross county competition, Albany Schenectady. So moved. Second. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, Dr. Hatter, can you um, talk about why we're approving a trip after it's occurring. Yes, absolutely. So a couple reasons why that happened. First of all, there was a delay in <clears throat> the processing of paperwork over the summer due to vacation schedules and due to the timing of our meetings. So that was one reality. But the other reality is we just have to do better in planning sooner because that was approved retroactively and it should have been approved prior to the children leaving. They've left, they've returned safely, the trip went well. Uh, moving forward, it's been made very clear that these trips are not going to be allowed to go off. If, if we can, there are going to be some instances where something arises at the last moment, which we did have this experience last spring where we had a team qualify, or lacrosse team specifically, qualified for the regionals. And the time frame from when they qualified to when the regional game was, was in between board meetings. So perhaps this might be something that we can look at within the policy committee at our next meeting for those types of one-off situations that seem to be happening more than in a one-off 
situation. But in this situation um, where it was just poor planning, we can assume that you reviewed, you personally reviewed everything and you were okay with yes. them leaving. Yes, yep. Uh, the, it, the trip still goes through the same approval process, which includes the signature of the building principal, the athletic director, the central administration uh, team, and then certainly the board. In this case, it is after the fact, absolutely after the fact, and that's something that will make sure does not happen in situations that we can avoid, but there, I can't say it'll never happen again because there are going to be situations where the trip arises and there's not enough time to schedule a board meeting. Thank you. So can we, um, put, Cheryl, can you put that on the policy list to maybe look about how you want to handle that yep. one off? Sure. Thank you. You got oh. it. Thanks, Yvette. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A motion to approve the cooperative transportation agreement with Yorktown, Brewster, Somers, and North Salem Central School Districts for the 24-25 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A motion to approve amendment number two to the agreement between Yorktown Central School Districts and Thurber Dynamics Corporation dated November 7, 2022, boiler heating systems maintenance and repairs for the 24-25 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A motion to extend the service agreement and amendment addendum with Primo Water slash Crystal Rock for the 24-25 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, be it resolved, the Board of Education approves the following facility users groups in accordance with Board Policy 1500 for the 24-25 school year. They are listed below. So moved. Second. All those Discussion. Go ahead. So. If anybody else comes and wants to use our facilities, they do they have to, that's not on this list, are they able to submit an application or? Yes, so that is the intent, that if somebody um, who's not already approved and the board is, um, the intention is to have the board approve this group every year, but if somebody new comes in during the year, they would have to go through the process, the vetting process, um, if administration um, approves of them, then we'll bring it to the Board of Education to okay. approve as well. That was the 30 days that I was asking, was that enough time to get that approval in? Okay. I mean, I think the intent from when we discussed it at the policy meeting was that um, it shouldn't be on that staff member who does this to approve or not approve. She can just point to the list and say, here, if you're not on this list, you got to go through the process. Yep. Okay, are we good? All yep. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be resolved that the Board of Education adopts the attached facilities use fees in accordance with Board Policy 1500 for the 24-25 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye opposed? Um, resolved the Board of Education approves the establishment of a cafeteria petty cash fund in the amount of $600 and appoints Jerry Matucci as a custodian of the funds. So moved. Second. Discussion. I just one question. Is the six hundred dollars coming from the lunch fund or from the general fund? It will be coming from the lunch fund. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, curriculum. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby ratifies the execution of the Board President and the Superintendent of Schools of of the 23-24 APPR implementation certification form for its annual professional performance review for classroom teachers and building principals covered pursuant to Education Law 3012D and Subpart 30-3 of the Rules of the Board of Regents. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ron, you want to explain why we had to put this on? Sure. So each year the State Education Department <clears throat> requires school districts to uh, essentially attest to the fact that all of the provisions of Ed Law 3012D were followed with fidelity. So there are a series of assurances that we provide the state to ensure that we followed the, the law, which we do and we did, and the school district board president and the school district superintendent sign off on that in the portal. However, in consultation with legal counsel, they believe it's best practice to also have the board authorize the action of the board president on their uh, you're acting on their behalf. In past years, that was actual physical signature. This year, it was you were clicking a button, right? Correct. Uh, this year, it was electronic, and there was um, I essentially your signature. I, I obtained your permission yes. to fill in your signature, yes. but it's just me typing in your name. So having this process gives more transparency to to our following at Law 3012D. Okay. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Special Ed. A motion to arrange the following placements as of August 26, 2024. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A settlement and release agreement be it resolved that the board hereby approves a settlement agreement dated August 26, 2024 in the matter of student number 5507 and be it further resolved that the superintendent of schools shall be authorized to sign the settlement agreement on the district's behalf. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion to approve the instructional services agreement between Beacon City School District as the sending district and the Yorktown Central School District as the receiving district for one student from Beacon City School District to attend a special education program in the Yorktown Central School District for the 23-24 school year and for the 24-25 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, gifts, grants, and donations. A motion to accept with gratitude the following gifts, grants, and donations. At Brookside and Mohansic, a digital copy of the Yorktown Heights map illustration from Rabinke Art LLC. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're up to board comments. Peter. I'm just looking forward to another exciting school year. So. Lisa? Uh, so I didn't get to go on the walkthrough tonight, but just from what I've seen, the buildings, the grounds, they look amazing. Our crew, as usual, did a great job getting the schools ready. Freshly? Yeah, Dr. Hatter, thank you for your hard work during the summer. Uh, the turf looks great, and, and I loved uh, looking at the pictures on Twitter. Um, you know, thank you, and just our amazing list of hires. Um, they just didn't come, you know. So uh, thank you for your hard work with that, and I uh, wish you a terrific opening day. Carol? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our employees who work over the summer. Um, the extended school year program, um, and beyond that, we have so many employees in here throughout the summer, our administrative team, our custodians, our O&M teams, our teachers who come in on their own time throughout the summer to get their classrooms ready to make sure, and all of these employees are really there to make sure that next Tuesday we are ready to go and that we're going to ensure a really great and successful year for all of our students. So with that, I say good luck to all of our students and our families, um, part of our district. It's going to be a wonderful year. Terrific. Mike? <laughs> uh, just a uh, welcome to all of our new uh, hires. I know you guys had a very busy summer, and thank you for uh, making sure that everybody's ready to go uh, come next week. And uh, welcome back to the students. Yeah, um, I, it's going to be an amazing year. I, I got the opportunity to meet the uh, new stu new teachers at New Teacher Orientation. That was really lovely. It looks like a great staff, great hiring group. So thank you. We know that that doesn't come by accident. You guys work very hard to make sure that only the best come to Yorktown. So we, we thank you for that. Um, that picture on Twitter that Reshmi mentioned about the, the new turf, I told Ron, I believe it belongs in the supplier's catalog. It yeah. looked that good. It, it was sure. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. They did a phenomenal job. So I'm really proud. And it's just the beginning of the work that we've been doing all summer. So that's really good. Um, and I just want to thank, I, I walked the high school and the middle school today. The custodians did a phenomenal job. Um, the high school, Especially, there were some staffing issues, and also they had all of the summer services in there, and they still managed to pull off a very clean, beautiful building. So the students are going to walk into something really nice. So I want to thank the entire staff at the middle school and the high school for all their hard work. And I know that we're going to see the same thing when we walk in on Wednesday, so at the other three buildings. So I just want to thank all of the facility staff for all of their hard work. Uh, Ron, Lisa, Didra, nothing? Okay. Um, we are up to public comment number two. Did anybody sign up? Oh, wait. So um, I am just going to read something that I we always read before a meeting. It is not targeted to you people. It is just something that we read. So although state law does not require us to hold a public comment, period, we have chosen to do so because we believe it is crucial for us to hear from our community members about their concerns or issues. Please note that the board is here to listen. The public comment period is not designed to be a discussion. Accordingly, please do not expect the board to respond to your concerns and questions tonight. Uh, you were asked to sign up on a sheet. You did so. Our public policy 1230 public participation at board meetings clearly states that we do not allow discussion involving or using the name or situation 
of individual district personnel or students, and anyone who speaks in violation of our policy will immediately give up their right to continue to speak. Speakers are expected to conduct themselves in a civil manner. Anyone using abusive or inflammatory language, using offensive language, or in any way causing a disruption will give up their right to speak. Members of the audience are expected to maintain civility and respect for the views of others. We do not allow calling out, clapping, or disruptions from the audience. We will be tracking each speaker's time. And towards the end of your three minutes, we will warn you to conclude. If you fail to abide by the three-minute period, we will turn off your microphone. And like I said, it is not targeted, so please know I read that all the time. Uh, Emily Clifford? Can you turn it? Yeah. Right up to the... Please just state your name for the record. It's a do-it-yourself here. <laughs> it's a do-it-yourself, right? There you okay. Go. Can you hear me? Okay. My name is Emily Gifford. Um, good evening. Thank you so much for having me and allowing me to speak here tonight. Um, I stand before you first as a student, as a parent of two students in the district. Um, it's been an amazing run for my kids. One is a rising high schooler and one is a rising middle schooler. And we're going to miss Crompon. Sam, it's going to have an amazing time there. Um, second to being a parent, I also stand before you as a clinical psychologist with over 20 years um, working with children and families in our community. Um, I'm here to appeal to you tonight to support a crucial change in how our district handles personal electronic devices during the school day. Um, while there are many areas that we can work together to improve the mental health and well-being of our students, I'm specifically advocating for the ban on smartphones in our high school. We all understand that technology plays a critical role in education, but the presence of smartphones in classrooms is undermining the very purpose of our educational system. Smartphones, while powerful tools, have become distractions that are harming our students' ability to focus, learn, and develop essential social skills. So first, the constant presence of smartphones in the classroom is leading to a significant decline in academic performance. We have research, studies show that the students who use smartphones during class time score lower on tests and are less likely to retain information. Instead of engaging with the material, they're tempted by social media, games, endless streams of notifications, and this distraction not only impacts them, but all of the students around them, making it harder for teachers to maintain everybody's attention. Second, smartphones are contributing to the erosion of our students' mental health. I'm sure you're all aware we're in a mental health crisis. There aren't enough services to provide for the children who need support. Um, the constant exposure to social media fosters a culture of comparison, leading to increased anxiety, depression, and feelings of inadequacy among our young people. Cyberbullying is also on the rise, and smartphones provide a platform for this harmful behavior even within the walls of our very safe schools. Lastly, the use of smartphones in schools is stunting the development of crucial social crucial social skills. Instead of interacting face-to-face, -face, students are increasingly communicating through screens, which diminishes their ability to build meaningful relationships, resolve conflicts, and develop empathy. These skills are just as important as academic knowledge in preparing our students for success in the real world. By banning smartphones and personal devices in school, we're not denying our students access to technology. Rather, we're creating an environment where learning and personal development can thrive. We know the problem. We I'm sorry, have you're, the data. you're three minutes. I'm sorry. Great. And we have the, the power to make changes. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So I am going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you for your comments.